Hello, you lovely ladies and gentlemen. We are back here in endless space as the amoeba. Where well, last we left off, I've been expanding. So, we're gonna get back to it right now. But more importantly, Star Wars news. All the Star Wars things are happening. I mean, we got a new, we got a new trailer for Episode 7 that people have enjoyed I'm talking about. We've got a new trailer for uh, Star Wars Battlefront, which not looking quite so good. Especially based on the other pre-release information that came with it. And that's more concerning the parts, the fact that the, uh... Essentially, only the Galactic Civil War is going to be available and there's no space combat. Which is sad because those were some... Those were part of the fun parts of Star Wars Battlefront. So... Besides, we haven't actually seen the gameplay yet. Most of the stuff they had in there was pre-rendered. So, hopefully it's going to be good. We won't really know until the result comes out, I suppose. But, Hope Springs Eternal in the Star Wars fandom, I guess. Or Incredibly Cynical Bastards. I'm not sure. We're going to have to increase taxes a bit because we are not making enough money. Which is sad, but that's how it works. The other big one was uh, Star Wars Rebels Season 2. That's going to be fun. We've got some well-known characters from the Clone Wars series coming back. Dramatic showdowns, epic tension. It's too much to handle, guys. Just saying right now, it's too much to handle. I can't take the pressure. We're gonna go send this guy. Let's colonize Thea. So we don't get blocked off there. That would suck. I'm going to set the Explorer to guard that relay. And we're going to colonize Indusa. Which has a Terran planet on it. And Hydra Meal. Which gives us more food. So, we're going to make this a food planet. We will have all the population. To balance out the fact that this place is going to have some industry, going to have some science. It's going to be a well-rounded system, I think. Yeah, looking forward to Star Wars Rebels. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say that. <coughs> Sorry, uh, springtime stuff. We finished Xeno Sociology, so we can make a dip, a galactic study center, which increases our happiness per percentage of diplomatic victory on the system. So the closer we get to allying with everyone and getting a diplomatic victory, the more likely it is that well, the happier our planets will be. I've got no idea why, but that's how it goes. Wait, it's not like they've ever played a 4X space game. They can't know that people are incredibly cynical and tend to look out for their own interests first and foremost. Can I decrease taxes? I can't admit. No. Lower taxes are good because it means you produce more, it means people are happier, you just don't get as much dust. But you can't go negative. Well, I mean, you don't want to be making negative dust because if you have dust, you can buy things. And afford heroes. So not, a lack of dust would generally be seen as a bad thing. We've finished Arid Epigenetics, we can all now colonize Arid Planets. Those will be good for getting dust. So we're going to get to work on... Uh, High energy magnetics, as well as photon disturbances. And then we'll shoot for uh, relativistic markets so we can get open borders with people and trade technologies and star systems. Improve fleet management so we can manage our fleet, get bigger fleets. Then botanical scanning. And once we're there, we will go for adaptive colonies so we can fix all those pesky flaws in our worlds. Pesky flaws, guys. It's a, it's a real issue, you know. Now then, improvements. We've got Kessler Syndrome here. This is not a nice thing. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure where we're getting all this extra dust from. But, I guess we'll roll with that then. Oh wait, is it because of the... Uh... 
I don't know anymore. I am confused. We can't colonize that yet, but uh... I'm not sure where the extra dust is coming from. I guess we'll go with an industry enhancement. Here, as well as here. Eh, doesn't matter that much, I suppose. As we can see up here, the uh, Sheridan and the Sowers are moving towards confrontation with each other. Which is good for me. The more our enemies fight each other, the less they will fight me and allow me to move towards bigger and better things. Soon we're going to have to start figuring out what we want to do in terms of victory, whether it's conquest or uh, di di diplomatic or technological. Finished more stuff. Move to Aranus. And we can now colonize uh, Thea. Planet does have Kester Syndrome, which is a problem, but once we get lava planets, we can get to the Fulcrum Siphon, which will resolve some of our issues. So then we're going to have to uh, put up with it. Didn't I get upgraded engines for this or something like that? Auto upgrade. Take off the deflector. Yeah, yeah. I got better engines for this. So, we're going to make a Mark II. And we're going to upgrade all the ships we're currently working on to be that new design so they're faster than our old one. Which is pretty useful, as you may guess. We're no longer losing money, we're now making money. Which is good. I know you enjoy... We all enjoy making cash. We need more money, more profits. And when I say cash, you know I mean dust. Because that's how the game works. Now then. Aha. Uh -huh. We have colonized the planet with Arga. As you can see here. Arga is the one with the blue ring around it, so it's this one. Well, we can't colonize that yet until we have uh, the ability to colonize uh, barren planets. And this place does have high gravity, which get, reduces the amount of industry we have and happiness. But that's a flaw we can fix later, once we've researched enough stuff. On the plus side, we have the Arga system, which is a pretty big boon in the grand scheme. Oh, hey guys. Are you doing something there? You're trying to come through my territory? Well, I'm sorry, but you can't do that, man. Can't have you colonizing any of my systems in my territory. Because they're mine. Sorry. We finished high energy magnetics. And just a new improvement in interplanetary transport network. And we've discovered antimatter. Antimatter is another one of those things that's good for improvements, good for, uh, Good for ship components. So this will be good for us. It'll allow us to build more things. Can we reduce taxes further? Yes, we can. Good. We need that. We need them industry. We need the pump. We need to be pumping on as much dust and food and stuff as we can. There's more ships. That will go to Delphinus. Alright. Soon we're going to be uh, out of sh planets to make ships on. This isn't too much of a problem, I suppose. 
Other than that, uh, I've been having a pretty good time of it. College is proceeding along nicely, classes, fun times like that. Hmm. Now we can colonize the arid planet. <laughs> I do not think we are making money anymore. Oh well. Yeah, no. We're losing money. We're losing cash. We'll just have to uh, deal with that as best we can. Gotta get through the expansion game though. Once we start ex stop expanding outwards, we can start building up our planets some more. Um, we are going to need some more colony ships once we've had a chance to build back up our populations of some of these planets. We don't get much of a choice there because we can't colonize everything yet. Our fleet commander is leveled up. Give them Tacticians level 2, which gives them a, a further minus 7% to enemy accuracy. Which is good because it means our ships are more likely to survive. No, no, no. Don't shoot him. How would you do that? Can you get here? No. Dang it. Please don't kill my ship. Yeah, that's the problem. We've got an enemy fleet right there. So, uh, just park it and hope that nothing happens. Oh, wait, this is that. No, we'll retreat. There's no point in a pointless fight. Not we can help otherwise. So yeah, I, re I retreated, but that's not a major problem. Now we gotta kick up taxes again so we don't go into default. Everybody hates me. All my planets hate me. But we'll deal with it eventually. We'll deal with it. Don't worry guys. I've got to handle the situation. I promise. Red colonized Sathras, and we can make lots of dust. Yes, they went away. I was rude there for a second, you guys. But some, but the Sheridan managed to colonize Rhinus. Oh well. That gives us something to strive for in the war. <laughs> if there is a war. Hopefully there isn't a war, but you never know. Not with the Sheridan. Now we've got some happiness back, thank you, thank goodness, and another colonization. I've got two ocean plants, both of them have a permanent monsoon. That's amusing. And a permanent monsoon gives them extra food, which makes this a really easy decision. Because normally they would have four, but with the monsoon they have six. And uh... They might have minus happiness, but once we get the tech to fix that, we won't have to worry about having minus happiness there anymore. And uh, since all these planets are considered outposts, like these, uh, I can't stop ships from moving through there. Oh, we got a free colony ship. That's nice. We also finished the Photonic Distortion, which gives us extra bonuses in battles, like offensive retreats and camouflage. I don't really ever use those, but that's beside the point. So we're going to go colonize on the new planets. Thanks to the free 
uh, extract the free one we got. Pretty nice, don't you think? What's our head? What's our uh, input look like? Okay, yeah. So we've got one happy planet. Just one. The rest, nah. Mm, do I want to do these? Well, I can't hire them anyway, so I guess it's not really worth thinking about it. Once we start getting some more dust income, then we can do that sort of thing. And so then, we're just going to have to hold it. Those look like the Sheridan are getting sandwiched in a lot. I mean, we got the sowers, they're expanding a lot. We've got the uh, other sowers, who are also expanding a fair amount. We've got the Sheridan, who are kind of sandwiched up at the top there. But I'm not going to complain about it, because, you know, this is good for me. Of course, we are going to be, we're most likely going to be forced into a war with them eventually. Because that's how these things tend to work. But... That's almost just par for the course. Speaking about that, though, let's make some peace, shall we? That means we can have things like trade with the uh, nations we're at peace with. We like peace with you too, guys. And they've both accepted, so... Soon we will begin setting up a... See, we already have trade routes with the sowers. Admittedly, it's, we only have three routes, and it's with one of them, but we're already getting ten, seven science and ten dust. That's pretty nice. Then we'll see if we can do the same for the Sheridan, but I kind of doubt. Oh, no. Peace. And they said, let peace reign. And so there was peace. Oh, another connotation. Oh. It's just a troll event telling me that sometimes the lack of stuff is odd in itself. It's probably because it didn't colonize out of the planet over there. But we have hetopelagic life, whatever the heck that means. It gives us extra science and extra food. Still gonna go with food production though, because that's useful. We may change it to science later, I'm not sure. Now that we can reduce the amount of taxes that we're taking in, so we can increase our production via the fact that we have additional output due to increased happiness. This is, as you may understand, may guess, a pretty good thing. I mean, one would it make the assumption. <clears throat> And we had another galactic event that dealt 25 HP damage, percent HP damage to all our ships. Because somebody sucks a lot. Well, fortunately, we are, that didn't happen during a war. That would have been terrible. I mean, if that had been, like, while I was fighting somebody, that just would have killed them. A lot. Well, I say that, but, you know. Now then, trade routes. Let's see what we got now. Okay, not as amazing. Well, we'll, have, we'll get new text that'll increase the amount of trade we can have with people, stuff like that. It's a slow process, you know. This is only the early game. We can't make assumptions on how things are going to turn out yet. Besides my inevitable victory, of course. <laughs> oh, come on! No, go away. Leave me alone. Oh, as you can see, uh, Sathras. I'm not sure if that was like that before, but the colony is now part of our territory so they can't go there without an open borders agreement 
and we're going to colonize Merope, which is a large arid planet, which will be good for dust production. Same thing when we get the desert planets, and then we'll get a bit of science here from here too. Very nice. Very nice indeed. We are somewhat reaching the ne ned the ne that words. Words are hard, guys, you know? I'm just saying. So we're gonna reach the Nadir of our expansion, and we won't be able to go any further without going to war with people. But now we can open borders, we can trade techs, we can trade star systems, we can trade resources. It's a whole new world for us. We finished our resources on Stadris, so now we can colonize one of the planets there. Get some more resources, get some more population. Nothing too shabby, to say the least. And, uh, there are no wars yet. One, one just has to hold out hope. Have some patience. And I don't think we we can't make alliances yet. We can't actually do anything for six turns. Unless someone else proposes it to me, but okay. Now they're offering open borders and they're gonna give me titanium seven each. Now since we're getting stuff in the deal, I'm gonna say yes. I mean, there's nothing we lose by it. Now we have four units of Titanium 70. And with four units, we have an extra 30% production cost on ship modules that use Titanium 70, which is good. So it means we don't have to spend as much uh, industry to build those modules, which means lower production time, which is good. It also means less dust for buyout, I think. Certainly, I ain't complaining about it. Now, uh, Sathras has finished what it was doing. So, why don't we get it on building some defenses? And that means we're going to build a combat ship. Alright. Now then, we're going to give it an engine because that's good. I'm gonna give it power because that will increase the amount of damage maximum and minimum. And then we're going to give it medium range beam weapons as well as deflectors because they're most likely to be using bullets at this stage. That's generally how the AI operates. If I'm wrong then we'll have to modify the ship design but if not then our defenses, our weapons will be able to hit them, they won't be able to hit us, or at least not as hard. We will call it the Icteros class, because strange name to what we do here. And we will build five of those, because that is the current size of a fleet that we can support. That'll change later, but especially once we finished like the text we're currently working on but the one we can only support five ships and a fleet with the max being like 20 I think and we've colonized Rhea that will generally be the full extent which we'll colonize until we get some new colonization techs or our populations have had a chance to recover Since, as you may notice, uh, we can't actually colonize anything there because we don't have the text we need. Once we have them, then we can do that. We did get a new hero available to us. He's another good combat hero, so once we get 80 dust, we should probably recruit him. we also got improved fleet management now, which gives us extra three command points, which means an extra three ships in our fleets. Which is uh, very useful, as you may guess. We've got Ancient Artifacts, that's plus three dust. Uh, let's do from type. 
the section type. You gotta give lot extra dust, extra science. They're pretty useful. And uh, we have four units of Hyperium. I'm gonna add extra onto that. And extra Hyperium means another minus 30 on resources there, which is good. We have trade routes with the uh, other sowers now. So we're now making a grand total of 12 science, 16 dust from trade. Isn't that nice, guys? The answer is yes, it's nice. But don't take my word for it, you know. We are really expanding now if you look so you can see the how our research our influence bubbles are growing. And we will hmm, this one is difficult. However, this one I think I'm going to set on dust conversion so it will convert all our industry to dust which is very useful since it means that we can uh, we'll be producing more dust overall at least until we change it back which we can use to buy up things at this point we don't well we can buy up that it's not much of an improvement but every turn helps Return does indeed help, and we should not overlook that sort of thing, if we can help it. Now then, anything else being produced? Uh, nothing that we can buy out that I can see, which is alright. Oh well. Can we talk with anybody yet? No, we still have to wait two turns for that. Which isn't a big problem. It just means time. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping. Yeah, I'll stop now. We finished botanical scanning, which means two improvements. One that increases happiness, the other that increases food. Which is good. And someone wants a deal. I want to trade Titanium 70 for Red Sang. Now, while I'd say yes, uh, we already have four of Titanium 70. We don't have four of Red Sang, as far as I'm aware. So if we agreed to this deal, we'd have to give it up. So I'm going to refuse. Sorry, buddies. I like you, but I don't like you that much. Now that we've got that, we are going to stop our industry to dust conversion so we can build these new improvements. And as you can see, our big bubble is expanding even more, and uh, soon people who don't have enough orders with me won't be able to move inside that territory. Soon this will be all one big red blob, and we'll be able to fight the big blue blob, because we like EU3 jokes here. We can now colonize Arctic planets. And we can now move our ships further, which is good. Uh, colonizing Betel, there's not really any point to that yet. More important would be colonizing Brassia, because that controls wormhole access. And wormhole access is pretty good. We have colonized our first harsh planet type. Congratulations on the settlement of an advanced and difficult planet type. There's a doorway to greater riches and, of course, greater risks. So we've colonized an Arctic world. This is really good for science, so we're going to focus on building up science here. And once we build up the science, we'll build up everything else. <laughs> Now then, we buy out anything else? No. Well, 
that will ensure that they can't slip into our system so easily from that route. We'll have to work on the others once we unlock those planet types. And we don't have to worry about anyone causing there because that's in our sphere of influence. So that's pretty much safe. As you can see, not everyone hates us anymore. We don't hate ourselves anymore. And we're making 16 science, 22 dust. That's a lot. At this point, though, there's not much else we can do besides look around. We can see that the uh, sowers and the Sheridan may soon come into a war, which would not be which will not be fun for anyone involved, except me. I'll enjoy it. We've got a new improvement that'll give us more population on planets, and so that's what we're gonna focus on moving there since we finished everything else. We'll check the diplomatic screen. Nobody is at war with anyone yet, but not everyone has a peace treaty with everyone yet either. On that note though, I think we will call it quits for this section. Uh, please like, subscribe if you enjoy this sort of content, you want to see more, it means a lot to me as a producer to know that people are enjoying this. And uh, I will see you in the next part.